the true story behind the first Thanksgiving. Nobody explained to Massasoit the meaning of immediate family. He brought 99 braves. But it wasn't all festive. They started out talking about two or three people dying a day. So half their company is dead. Hear why the pilgrims were truly thankful. How you doing? You got a beer? On today's 700 Club. The 700 Club. It looks like tomorrow's Turkey Day and it's pouring rain in this part of the country, pouring snow in other parts of the country. And Wendy just got back from West Virginia. I understand it was eight inches in some of the mountains up there. Were you in that? It did snow a little bit. We didn't see anywhere any. Well, I was in White Sulphur Springs. Yeah, in, well, uh, it is in the mountains, but I know like at Hot Springs where you have a home, it was it was snowing up there. Well, it was one degree wind chill, one degree, and I, it's been as cold as, as 60, so it gets very cold up there. You interviewed our good friend Carlton Varney. When are we going to get to see that? Mr. Color, he's known, oh, and he definitely good. is that in more ways than one. Um, this is going to be a Christmas special. It's going to be phenomenal. He's going to take us on a tour of the Greenbrier and all the different Christmas trees Ooh. and teach us all kinds of things about the Greenbrier and the history of this incredible resort. Well, he's decorated for everybody. I think the Shah of Iran on down. I mean, he is something else. So mm -hmm. he's fun. You had a lot of fun. Oh, he's, he's tremendous. Well, I'm glad he, to see you. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, so what they call Obamacare is in serious political trouble and another uh, assault may be coming up. I don't know if this is going to succeed. Seed, but Hobby Lobby is suing to say, look, this mandate shouldn't force us to uh, pay for contraceptive style drugs. That's right. Christian businesses are challenging the Obamacare contraception mandate because they say it violates their religious freedom. Heather Sells has the story. Hobby Lobby founder David Green owns the Oklahoma based Christian arts and craft store chain. Sharing the gospel, he says, is the driving force behind his quest for success. There's so many decisions that we have to make that we just can't make without God, the Holy Spirit, guiding us. And it has been very important for us and our family to lean on the Holy Spirit. Green employs 13,000 full-time employees and does his best to care for them. Over the years, he's raised the minimum wage to $11 an hour and closed his stores on Sundays to allow employees time for family. But he objects to the Obamacare mandate that requires employers to subsidize birth control as a part of employee health care benefits. Green believes life begins at conception and opposes birth control that prevents the implantation of a fertilized egg in the uterus. Hobby Lobby and about 40 other companies have filed suit over the requirement. The Supreme Court will now decide whether the religious views of company owners can trump a government mandate. This would be the first time that the Supreme Court has ever recognized that corporations are protected in their religious liberty in the same way that living, breathing human beings are. White House spokesman Jay Carney says the health care law, quote, puts women and families in control of their health care and notes that churches are exempt from the mandate. So far, the lower courts have been divided on the issue, giving the Supreme Court even more reason to weigh in. Heather Sells, CBN News. Well, Jay Sekulow with the American Center for Law and Justice is here with us now. And Jay, uh, what do you think about this one? It's a, it's a tough call for the Supremes. But we're not talking about abortion, uh, although people think that morning after pill is a type of abortion. Right. But it's being presented sure. as a opposition to contraception, which is a losing game. Yeah, and that's not really what the issue is. So the, the groups that are opposed to what Hobby Lobby and others are doing. By the way, Pat, we've had seven of these cases. We've gotten injunctions in all seven, including uh, at the Court of Appeals level. We have one that is at the Supreme Court right now on an issue, uh, but we did get the injunction in place. The question is this, do corporations have the right to free exercise of religion? In other words, can a corporation's owners put forward through their company their faith and values? You remember the Supreme Court held just a few years ago that the First Amendment right of freedom of speech apply to corporations. So now the question really is, does it apply, the free exercise clause apply to corporations? And while the other side's trying to say it's all about contraception, it's, it's really not. It's you've got a situation where business owners like Hobby Lobby and others sincerely object to this portion of the mandate 
of Obamacare, which is this requirement of what they consider, as you just mentioned, like the morning after pill, abortifacence. Uh, they want those not to be part of their plan. They're not saying people can't get them. They're just saying they don't want to pay for them. So I think the court's going to be very closely divided. The key vote to look for here is Justice Kennedy. And, you know, he tends to decide these cases uh, tending towards liberty. And I think the liberty interest of the owners of these companies trump anything else. So um, cautiously optimistic, but it's going to be a very, very close and quite frankly, a very complex case. Well, it is being pitched by the uh, opposition as uh, this is going to be denying women the freedom to have contraception. There's no such thing. Nobody's denying it. They just don't want to pay for it. Is that right. the way? That's exactly right. I was on uh, CNN yesterday uh, in debate on this, and that's what was brought up. Well, what about, the, I said, the free exercise rights of these business owners? The counter was, what about the uh, reproductive freedom rights of these uh, women? Well, they're not interfering with those. They're just simply saying, we don't think the government should compel us to pay for this. Okay. And that's really what this is about. Can the government be in a position to compel a business owner to violate their conscience. And I think at the end of the day, the answer should be no, as it has been in our seven cases. But this is going to be closely divided. Arguments will be probably sometime in uh, February, with a likely uh, February, March, likely outcome the end of June. Cautiously optimistic, but a very close call. Um, you've been suing the IRS. The IRS did some bad mm -hmm. things under Lois Lerner in terms of uh, 501c4 yeah. groups. What are they trying to do now? They're trying to come, is it an end run or to try to <laughs> limit free speech again? It, uh -huh. yeah, change the rules in the middle of the game. So we've got litigation pending right now with 41 cases, uh, not just Tea Party groups, by the way, but other conservative and Christian organizations. And the IRS is proposing a game change, a rule change in the middle of the proceedings. And these rule changes, and Pat, you're one of the main architects of this whole uh, revitalization of political engagement by conservative and Christian organizations. They believe that the distribution of voter guides or even get out the vote campaigns are, are not social benefit, uh, which is absurd. But this is the new position the IRS is going to advocate. And they want, it's basically a post hoc justification for their already acknowledged illegal behavior. I think the courts will see right through it if these, in fact, become the regulations, but they've got to go through a long process for the regulatory review, and believe me, we will be fine. They call them comments. Trust me, your American Center for Law and Justice yeah. is going to be filing comments. Uh, you uh, can bet on that. Is this being driven by the White House? I mean, it's, it's obviously ideological, and, and that whole thing that was going on before, I mean, it was right out of the White House. What do you think about this one? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, they got the Treasury Department issued these proposed regulations. You know they're in consultation with the White House, with the president and his staff, certainly with the chief of staff and the uh, White House counsel. And these proposed regulations say a get-out-the-vote drive is now deemed to be purely political activity, not qualifying, in their view, not qualifying for social uh, welfare benefit. And how is it that getting people to exercise their right to vote is not a benefit to the social welfare of a community? I don't get that. Well, and the IRS is applying, applying these 30-day and 60-day prohibitions for distribution of voter guides. You know, they tried that in, in campaign finance before. Mm. Those have all been struck as unconstitutional. So this is the ongoing saga of an IRS that is incapable of self-correcting. Jay, they've got to take over this monstrous health care law. How can they possibly do it? You know, Pat, they can't. I mean, that, that's the real mm. nexus here. That's the real connect you have to draw, and you just did it so well, is that the IRS is the enforcement vehicle for Obamacare. That means those IRS agents that have been sharing information with uh, parties they should not be doing it, sharing it with other government agencies, are going to have your most sensitive data, your health data, and they're going to be in control and enforcing it both from an economic standpoint and all this data sharing. And I think, Pat, that should be causing the American people uh, a lot of nervousness. With the rollout of Obamacare being such a disaster, with the healthcare.gov not operating, with no one registering to do this plan, the idea that the IRS is going to be, you know, the equivalent of the police in enforcing this should be sending chills up everyone's spine. I can't even believe that they decided to let the IRS do it. And in light of all these problems, you'd think they would have figured out another way. But hopefully Obamacare falls on itself and we don't have to deal with the IRS. Well, how's the case you've got, uh, or the, uh, the ACLJ has got against the IRS? How's that proceeding? It, Pat, we've just filed a recently amended 
complaint adding additional parties, including the IRS White House Counsel, additional counts. And in fact, these proposed guidelines actually help us in the sense that it proves that what the IRS was doing before was targeting and it was illegal. So I am really optimistic. I, the government's response is not due until the middle of December. So we'll get their response in the middle of December. Uh, they've got both the Department of Justice Tax Division as well as outside counsel defending these individuals that are employed by the IRS in their official and individual capacities. So there's a lot of lawyers involved. It's uh, one of the biggest suits we've ever handled, but Pat, they've acknowledged the wrongdoing here. They can correct this, by the way, very mm -hmm. quickly. They're just right now incapable of doing it. Those applications that have been pending for three years are still pending. And before these fake proposed guidelines mm -hmm. were issued yesterday, remember they were offering this deal, if you'll do 40% or less of your activity is deemed, quote, political, we'll automatically give you the exemption. It used to be 49%. So if you surrender 9% of your constitutional rights, you'll get an automatic exemption. No one's buying any of this. Uh, the IRS is doing these post hoc justifications. It's a big case, big repercussions. Right. But you know, I, as you know, that my first job out of law school, that's what I did. Yeah. I was an IRS lawyer. So it's, and one of my, yeah. uh, a co-counsel on the case was uh, actually in my same office uh, at the IRS, so we're working the case together. His name is Julian Fortuna, Jay, lawyer uh, in Atlanta. We're, he's working with us. We've got former U.S. attorneys involved. We've got a, the A-team is litigating this case. Obama wants to pack the D.C. circuit, put three more judges on yep. a circuit that doesn't need any more judges, all liberals, uh, some feminists, one the feminist. Uh, uh, come down always on feminist causes. Uh, will, he, will this case come before the D.C. Circuit with that reconstituted body, or, or will it, how's it going to shape up? No, it, it does. I mean, the initial is before the trial court. Uh, if it were to go against us, we would appeal it. If it goes against the government, they're going to appeal it. And yes, it's going to go before the uh, D.C. Circuit and depend on who the panel is. And if you have as you said, if you have a, an en banc review, an entire court review, you'll end up with all these new judges. Here's the problem with the three judges. I, mean, I know one of the judges uh, uh, very well, who was an assistant solicitor general of the, uh, under Bush's term and under uh, uh, President Obama. And she's a very bright lawyer. But uh, the, the fact is, that that's not the question. The question is, are these judges needed? And when I testified before Senator Sessions' committee on the courts, there was a real question, it's a real question as to the workload of these courts that are at their all-time low in the last, you know, 10 or 15 years, that the 11th Circuit, which has fewer judges and a higher caseload, they're not behind. The judges are not behind at the D.C. Circuit. So this is nothing short of court packing. That's, the president said he wants to remake the judiciary, and by exercising the nuclear option, he's going to do that. But, Pat, what is good for the goose is good for the gander. And that means what's going to happen here is when the Republicans are back in control, which will happen one day in the Senate and in the White House, look out on who's going to be appointed. There, there should be no holds barred on these judicial appointments. The gander had better win some elections. <laughs> Jay, thank you so much. And happy Thanksgiving. Appreciate everything you're doing. Happy buddy. Thanksgiving to you too, Pat. All right. And to Didi. Yep, great. Well, the Northeast is getting hit with a massive winter storm. John Jessup has that story from Washington. Here's John. Pat, from Florida to Maine, millions of people along the eastern seaboard are dealing with snow, sleet, and rain today from a nasty storm system. It's threatening Thanksgiving plans on one of the busiest travel days of the year with dangerous roads and hundreds of delayed or canceled flights. In North Carolina, widespread damage after a possible tornado touched down, damaging homes, knocking down power lines, and injuring several people. Well, six months ago, one of the most destructive tornadoes ever recorded leveled parts of Moore, Oklahoma. One organization known as Mercy Chefs tried to make the first Thanksgiving after the storm a memorable one for the community south of Oklahoma City. Mark Martin has a story. The massive EF5 tornado injured nearly 400 and took the lives of 23 people, including seven children at Plaza Towers Elementary. 210 mile per hour winds destroyed the school. A memorial of seven crosses honors the lives of the students. The two mile wide tornado also leveled Briarwood Elementary. Teacher Donna Goodman hunkered down under a desk with 15 students when the twister hit. All of a sudden I saw daylight and I realized that the roof was coming off. And then I just remember shutting my eyes really tight, holding onto the kids that I could touch and telling them it was going to be okay. We were going to make it. 
a hot Thanksgiving meal provided by Virginia-based Mercy Chefs and Southgate Baptist Church and more helps a community that's been through so much to heal. One of the things we hope that they don't experience today is the feeling of just being in another line for a handout. We want to set a table of hospitality. We want them to feel welcomed and valued. We want to serve them. Forget about their problems for a while. It's nice to see that expression on their faces when that that level of, of anxiety leaves their face, leaves their body for a moment. As much as anything else, I love to see the church be the church and uh, to see people from all kinds of backgrounds, all denominations were able to come together and serve and have, uh, and have one, one directive and one motive, and that is to care for people and to share and to show the love of Jesus Christ. We're always thankful for our families, for our homes, for the God who saved us. But this year, people are going to realize what they were saved from. People were saved from death. People were saved from destruction. People were pulled out from rubble where they should have not survived. And it makes you more thankful for the life that you have. In this season of Thanksgiving, survivors of the Moore, Oklahoma tornado share a meal prepared by generous, merciful hands. It's a boost to those who have suffered great loss and press on to rebuild. Mark Martin, CBN News. Pat, I was there on the ground immediately after the storm in Moore, Oklahoma, and I have to say some of those people are the most resilient people you'll meet. Oh, it's beautiful. And what uh, Operation Blessing, they built a house out there for somebody. It's gorgeous. And Mercy Chefs did a tremendous job. They located right here. And uh, uh, that, that uh, 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 the head chef is one have fabulous cook. Mm -hmm. He can he, really, he's Cajun, you know. He, he, <laughs> uh, he, well, in any event. Well, folks, uh, a few days ago, I showed you the Sotheby's catalog, and it showed the first book that was printed in America. It is the Bay Book of Psalms, published in the year 1640, the early days of our nation. Well, it went up for auction yesterday, and Ooh, the price is a shocker. Here's John. <laughs> Pat, that's right. The tiny book of Psalms published nearly 400 years ago has set a record for a book sold at auction, going for $14.2 million at Sotheby's in New York. The Bay Psalm book is believed to be the first book printed in what is now the United States. The book was uh, one of two owned by Boston's Old South Church. The church sold it to increase its grants and fund its, fund its ministries. American businessman and philanthropist David Rubenstein bought the book. He plans to lend it to libraries around the country. Pat, I could have sworn that you were supposed to ask Dee Dee about placing a bid for that book. Well, you know how it is. She's so conservative. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm not writing checks in that number anymore, brother. Thank you, anyhow, for the compliment. 14, Wendy. 14 million, right? One months. book. Yeah. You're gonna put it in your library. Okay, stick that in the. In you think the it's bookcase. worth it? You think it's worth it? Oh, it's the first book printed in America. Sure it is. It depends on what is worth. What, what's it worth to you? It's worth yeah. what well, somebody will pay for it. And David Rubenstein's a wealthy guy, and so to him, it it's a priceless treasure. Yeah. It really is. Okay, but it's awesome. interesting, the first thing printed was the Bible. Keep in mind where this country came from. Oh, All right, oh, oh. it's Thanksgiving, it's Turkey Day. <laughs> Wendy's going to tell us it's almost. Well, coming up, the real story behind the first Thanksgiving, where the pilgrims were simply thankful to be alive. Finally looked at him and said, I cannot wait until you fools die, and I can put your bodies in a shroud and dump you into the ocean, you hymn singing puke stockings. Well, the next week he died, the pilgrims put his body in a shroud and dumped him into the ocean. Oh my, well, we'll head to Plymouth Rock for a story you won't find in the history books. And then later, we've got the best seat in the house to the premier event of the holiday season. You guessed it, the Macy's Parade. So don't go away. Cell phones are great, but the amount some companies charge is just crazy. Since Connie and I switched to Consumer Cellular, we both get everything we want and we're paying about half what we used to. Do I have to buy the whole basket? No. Hey, you old cheapskate. Hey, Jack. Why pay for more than you need, right? That's why I keep telling you, Consumer Cellular plans start at just $10 a month. And I'm finally ready. My contract's up. Oh, here's to the end of contracts. Yeah. Well, did you tell him how easy it is to switch? Well, of course I told him. It's really easy to switch. Okay. 
Consumer Cellular. Simple plans with award-winning service and no contract. Start your 30-day risk-free trial today. Activation is free, a $35 value, and we'll ship it free. Or visit a Sears store today. And Consumer Cellular was selected as the exclusive wireless provider for AARP members. Ask about your special discounts. Call 1-800-460-7238. Go online to ConsumerCellular.com or visit a Sears store today. With Basic Talk Home Phone Service, you can make unlimited, crystal clear domestic calls for just $9.99 a month, every month. But if you don't believe me, listen to this trustworthy grandfather and his golden retriever. With Basic Talk Home Phone Service, you can make unlimited, crystal clear domestic calls for just $9.99 a month. That's every month. No gimmicks. How did you get my house? Basic Talk, just $9.99 a month. Call, click, or go to Walmart today. Thursday, celebrate Thanksgiving with the 700 Club. We'll ring in the holiday with the Gettys, the Annie Moses Band, King and Country, and more. On a special edition of the 700 Club. Well, there's a Fox program that goes on at 5 in the afternoon called The Five, and they've gotten a discussion. Uh, one of them said, well, Franklin Roosevelt, one of the things he gave to our country was uh, the first Thursday in Thanksgiving, I mean, the last Thursday in Thanksgiving, which is Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And somebody has said, no, it was Abraham Lincoln. Well, the truth is it was way before then. George Washington? <laughs> way before him, too. 400 years ago, the Pilgrims up in Massachusetts celebrated what we think is the first Thanksgiving in the New World. We had one up at, uh, it was Florida 100, or one of those uh, places up the James River that had a Thanksgiving similar to that in a very early in the 1600s. But what you didn't know uh, were why they were so thankful. It was because God brought so many miracles to keep them alive during a terrible time that might well have killed every single one of them. Paul Strang brings us that story from Plymouth, Massachusetts. Here at Plymouth Plantation, near the site of the actual Pilgrim settlement, reenactors portray a hardy, thriving Plymouth several years after the settlers arrived. Their radical faith in a living God is displayed in recreations of a Sunday service. Let thy spirit guide us in these and all our actions for thy glory and the good of thine elect. But years before, it took miracle after miracle for the pilgrims to survive their first few months in the New World and make it to their first Thanksgiving. Pilgrim reenactor Leo Martin gives tours in the city of Plymouth out of the Jenny Museum he helps run. He says these religious separatists were unshakable, determined people not to be trifled with. One pilgrim-hating sailor on the Mayflower found out it didn't pay to curse them or their god finally looked at him and said, I cannot wait until you fools die and I can put your bodies in a shroud and dump you into the ocean, you hymn singing puke stockings. Well, the next week he died, the pilgrims put his body in a shroud and dumped him into the ocean. And to this day, nobody knows what killed him. Still, when they landed way off course to the north, the cruel, harsh winter of 1620 killed half of these tough pilgrims. Dr. Paul Jaley reenacts and heads the Plymouth Rock Foundation, which highlights the pilgrims' die-hard, flinty faith. They start out talking about two or three people dying a day. So half their company is dead. Nearly out of food, they were living on a ration of just five kernels of corn a day. And most of the mothers perished because they gave their portions to their starving children. Those 18 married women, 14 died the first winter sacrificing themselves for the next generation. But even in the midst of all this, the guidance of God was evident. Exploring in their shallop boat, they found here above the famous Plymouth Rock, a place that perfectly, miraculously met their needs. A river of fresh, clean water teeming with fish. Next to it, a high hill, now a cemetery, but then the perfect location for their cannon set to ward off Spanish, French, or native enemies. And since they couldn't fit plows on the Mayflower, they desperately needed a large plowed field no longer claimed by anyone. They found three acres of cleared farmland, which the natives have abandoned. Because a plague had killed most of them. Now they're wiped out by a plague. So no, no other Indians would come on the property. Then Martin tells CBN News of one of the strangest occurrences of all. An unknown Indian walked up and spoke English. How you doing? You got a beer? 
he led them to a young brave named Squanto, taken under the wing of this man, friendly chief Massasoit of the nearby Wampanoag tribe. Taken captive earlier by the Britons and made a slave, Squanto had escaped, learned English in Britain, and had now returned. He taught the pilgrims how to plant the native maize, or corn. And it did save them, because the wheat, rye, and barley they brought with them wouldn't take to the sandy soil the corn did. And he showed them how to use the plentiful fish in this river as fertilizer to make the corn grow well. Guanto was this providential instrument used by God. By the next fall, the crop had thrived enough, the pilgrims decided to celebrate and give thanks to God, inviting Massasoit and his immediate family to come feast with them. Unfortunately, nobody explained to Massasoit the meaning of immediate family. He brought 99 braves. First Thanksgiving went on for three days as English settlers and natives feasted and celebrated side by side. But the pilgrims didn't forget that starving time that killed half their number. Governor Bradford put five kernels of corn on everybody's plate and asked everybody there to give him five things they were thankful for that first year in Plymouth. And that's what we consider our first Thanksgiving. Plymouth honors the pilgrims year-round through such things as its national monument to the forefathers, topped by a female figure titled Faith. This commemoration included an Abraham Lincoln reenactor, since it was Lincoln who in 1863 made Thanksgiving a national holiday. The fact of the matter is the Almighty deals with us as nations as well as individuals. And much of the nation makes its gratitude known every Thanksgiving to the God whose divine hand guided through terrible trials these brave, determined pilgrims. Paul Strand, CBN News, reporting from Plymouth, Massachusetts. We had a prayer meeting uh, this Monday. I led the prayer meeting of our staff, and I just felt instead of teaching, I had something I could have talked about. I said, look, just give me your, what you're thankful for. And y you know what I was thankful for? I was thankful for this planet. Really? I mean, just think of it. Yeah. I but, mean, how God's just given us everything that we need. Well, we've got mm -hmm. soil, we've got the sun, we've got fresh water, we've got seeds. I mean, you just assume you can dig up a plant, stick it in the ground, it'll grow and flourish. Mm -hmm. But why would it? I mean, you know, it, it's there because God has made us. We're just the right distance from the sun. Mm -hmm. We have a moon that keeps us stable. We have an internal core of electromagnetic uh, molten lava that keeps everything straightened out in terms of all of our compasses. That's I mean, you could go, and, and it also keeps off, uh, it, it puts a shield around us to keep some of these nasty things from hitting us so that it's running around in the space. You go on and on. Well, we take it for granted. We get up and it's the sun shining. I know. We really, really do. God created everything we need. And yeah. just within a few fractions, you know, if the sun was just a little bit closer, we wouldn't be here. We'd be scorched to mm -hmm. death a little bit farther away. We'd be uh, all ice. Uh, I tell you, I, I, I just thank God for it. I mean, we should thank God for all these things. And that was my thanksgiving. And then all the people, the staff, various ones were thanking God. It was a beautiful prayer meeting. So Thanksgiving, when you sit around the table, don't just think, I thank God for grandma or something. That's nice. But how about the big things that God's done for you? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I'm thankful, really thankful for my family. Everyone, I'm the oldest yeah. of five, and everyone's mm -hmm. doing well and healthy, and we're all going to see each other. And you get together for Thanksgiving? Oh, yeah. Good. I'm, uh, we're going to get together at my sister's house in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. How nice. Steeler well, country. God bless you. Yes, yes, Steeler <laughs> country. Well, we hope the Steeler <laughs> Rothensburg is in good health for, for, for Thanksgiving. Okay, Amen. what else? Well, after the Pilgrims' first Thanksgiving, the holiday was celebrated off and on for the next hundred years. George Washington proclaimed a national day of thanks when he was president, as did Abraham Lincoln, and also, as Pat mentioned earlier, Franklin Roosevelt. But these days, many people don't need a presidential proclamation to ring in the holiday. They just need one thing, the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. It's a Thanksgiving tradition that rivals turkey and pumpkin pie. The Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade draws millions of spectators to the streets of New York. It's been a staple in American households since it first appeared on television in 1945. This is one of the largest uh public gatherings in the United States. It's sort of the opening act for Thanksgiving Day for a lot, a lot of American families. For most of us, the parade lasts just a few hours. But for some Macy's employees, the parade never ends. A team of artists and craftspeople work year round, creating the floats and balloons that line Broadway each November. It seems like it goes by in the blink of an eye, you know, but there's all of this whole year of getting everything together. 
The parade is just like a Thanksgiving dinner that takes hours to create and minutes to devour. So there's a lot of designing and sketching and we work with the computers and drawings and all of that technical stuff in order to make these giant floats. And of course, our signature is those giant balloons flying in the sky. It takes quite a long time to put all that together. The team also cooks up new ideas each year. We have a whole clutch of new parade balloons this year. Uh, wonderful new characters. We have incredible new floats this year. They don't have to start completely from scratch. A few items always make the menu. You know, you've got to have some of the things that are traditional, like turkey, and we always have our turkey float, and you always finish with a great dessert, and we always have Santa at the end. Many generations of Macy's employees have labored to create a recipe for success, and many more will follow. We're very happy to be the temporary guardians of this incredible tradition, which is a very old tradition, something very beloved in America, and, and uh, we'll be happy to pass on to the next generation when that time comes. Love it. All right. Well, up next, a busy mom whose Thanksgiving plans were put in jeopardy. Intense. Almost if you could not get a full deep breath because the pain was so sharp. I went to the ER that evening. When I came home, within two days, I was worse. See how this woman got a Thanksgiving miracle. Plus, we'll be praying for you and your needs right after this. The truth is that today's investment world can be very confusing. In the short run, real assets like gold can go down and paper assets can go up. But not for long. So along with learning the truth about the dollar and inflation, my grandpa also is teaching me the four W's of wise gold investing. Why? Gold is a store of value, a wealth preserver in a world that's flooded with debt. What? Gold coins are true money that can never be devalued. When? If you don't own any gold yet, Breda, you better buy it immediately. Where? Swiss America offers fair prices, great service, and higher education. It's all explained in a simple trip newsletter, CD, and DVD. And best of all, it's free. Call or log on now for your free Simple Truth Kit. Learn the basics about the 21st century gold rush for safety and growth. Next time, I'll explain the simple truth about a golden retirement. Remember the happy days when he said everyone gets health insurance. But now, Congress says 7 million Americans will lose their health insurance, and your insurance rates could increase by 200%. Some health plans even get hit with a 40% tax and over $700 billion in Medicare cuts. So now, we're really sad. But you can be happy again by getting the Obamacare Survival Guide. It's already a number one New York Times bestseller, and over 500,000 Americans have gotten a copy. Newsmax says it's the best guide to the new law. You can get your copy at Obamacare911.com. It gives you the tips, strategies, and loopholes you need to know. Get your copy of the Obamacare Survival Guide at stores everywhere for $19.95, or get the internet-only offer of just $4.95 and save $15. Go to Obamacare911.com to claim your copy now. Well, as a working mom, Mary Woods has her hands full. So when she hurt herself right before Thanksgiving one year, Mary's life came to a standstill, but not for long. Watch this. Okay, who wants orange juice and who wants milk? Mary Woods is a super busy mom with two young daughters and a full-time job. I get up in the morning, wake my girls up by 7.15, and get them moving and going to get ready to get out the door and not be late for school. But her ability to keep the household running came to a standstill just days before Thanksgiving when Mary injured her side while lifting a piece of furniture. It was intense. Almost if you could not get a full deep breath because the pain was so sharp. I went to the ER that evening and they told me that um, it was a pulled muscle and that there was not much I could do but allow it to heal. When I came home, within two days, I was worse. Mary canceled her Thanksgiving plans and stayed on the couch to rest. That's when she prayed with the 700 Club and asked God for healing. 
Pat spoke a word. There is somebody that has pain in their left side. Something happened to somebody's stomach. I believe that I was going to say it was an ulcer, but it's not. I just felt instantaneously that the Lord was touching me. A tear started coming down my eyes. I was able to breathe and move and bend without pain. The Lord had just instantaneously healed me. Mary cooked her Thanksgiving meal pain-free. I think that was probably one of the best Thanksgiving dinners I made because I was so happy to be moving and to be free of pain and to be able to actually make the meal that I wouldn't have been able to had the Lord not healed me. I am so incredibly grateful to God's mercies and grace for reaching out His hand and touching me. Well, maybe like Mary, you need a Thanksgiving miracle too. Well, the good news is God can do anything. He's no respecter of persons, and what He did for Mary, He wants to do for you. And we've got some uh, prayer hey, praise reports tell right us now. About them. Well, Diane of Glendale, Kentucky, developed an irritation in her right eye. This caused her to have terrible headaches on a regular basis, and she tried taking over the counter meds, but it didn't help. Then one day, Diane was watching the 700 Club when she heard you, Pat, give a word of knowledge. You said your eye is irritating you like crazy. God touched you and has healed you. Well, she claimed that word for herself. And Pat, you gave another word of knowledge. There are several with terrible headaches and God is healing that. In faith, Diane quickly claimed both words that same day, the irritation and the headaches disappeared. She's not had any trouble since. You know, it's amazing. We don't know Diane, but God knows her. And uh, God also knows Lisa of Georgetown, South Carolina, that a cyst on her right thyroid. Mm. The cyst grew so large, and finally, Lisa, I gotta, I gotta see a doctor. So. The mother called the 700 Club, asked prayer for her daughter's condition. When she returned from the uh, doctor with a follow-up appointment, the cyst was gone. The doctor said, quote, if you believe in miracles, you've got one. Hmm. Hallelujah. Folks, we believe in God. It's the day before Thanksgiving. We believe in giving thanks to the Lord. And let your requests be known to God with Thanksgiving. So we thank Him for His goodness, and we praise Him for all of His mercies. Now, Wendy and I are going to join hands together, and we're going to pray for you. Right now, right now, God wants to give you a miracle. Mm -hmm. Father, Thank you, Lord. I join hands with my sister in Christ, and together we believe for those of this audience who are suffering. In the name of Jesus, mm. in the name of Jesus, Thank you, receive a miracle. Mm. I'm hearing rheumatoid arthritis. Yeah. A lot of people suffering with that right now, especially with the weather. Yes. And so, Lord, I just thank you right now that you, that anybody who has that, that they can just reach up and claim their healing from you. You are healing rheumatoid arthritis right now in Jesus' name. Uh, you've got a swelling in your abdomen, and it's it's a tumor that's there, and you, you just thought it might be gas or something, but it's not. It's a tumor, and God is right now. You'll feel like fire. Just touch that area of your body in the name of Jesus. Be made whole. Thank you, Lord. Thank I, you, Lord. I'm hearing fingers and toes, people that um, have sore, maybe numbness, um, pain or numbness in your fingers and toes. The Lord wants you to know He's healing you right now. Just receive it in Jesus' name. Shortness of breath. I think you've had atrial fibrillation, and right now God is reaching in and changing the chemistry in your heart, and you are your heart is regulating in the name of Jesus. Mm. Yes. And that shortness of breath will leave, and may the power of God touch you and many, many in this audience with headaches. The, the headaches are leaving you even as we speak. Oh, Wendy? Yes, I'm, I was getting headaches too. A lot of stress yeah. headaches, a lot of people trying to get ready for the holidays. Amen. But Lord, you're just relieving migraines. Father, people that are suffering with migraines right now, Lord, um, they don't need this going in the holidays. I pray right now you would do a miracle. Just take it in and Jesus' name. Lord, we praise you again. We thank you for all of your goodness. We mm. thank you for the life we have. Thank you for health. Thank you for our families. Thank you for freedom. Thank you for your bounty in Jesus' name. Mm. Amen. Amen. Give us a call. We'd love to hear from you if you've had something happen in your life. Call us if you need further prayer. Call us. We're here 24 hours a day, 1-800-759-0700. Wendy? Man, that was fun. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the holidays are the most wonderful time of the year, and they're also the most stressful, but they don't have to be. Still ahead, we'll remember the true meaning of the season by honoring a tradition more than a thousand year old, years old. We'll show you why many Christians celebrate Advent when we come back. 
For the rest of my life, I'm gonna have to live with this condition. They were starting to pray for people, and that'd be really cool if that happened to me. But no way, like the show is, is too big. There's so many people watching, and they started talking about how there's someone out there with a foot problem. You have a condition with the arches of your feet. God is healing that for you right now. Put one foot on the ground, then the other. No pain, nothing. This is a special announcement for anyone with joint discomfort who's been disappointed by products that have failed to provide the relief they were seeking. Complimentary samples of a revolutionary joint relief breakthrough called Beneflex are now being made available to the public. The unique Beneflex formula contains a clinically tested patented ingredient that's so effective, you only need to take one pill daily, just one pill, and you can begin to experience joint relief in as few as seven days. To guarantee your complimentary two-week sample, you must call now, 1-800-940-5957. Again, if you have joint discomfort and have been disappointed by products currently available, complimentary samples of a powerful new quick joint relief formula are being made available to the public. To guarantee your sample, you must call now. Beneflex is available at GNC and Vitamin Shop, but you can only receive your complimentary sample by calling this number, 1-800-940-5957. Welcome to Washington for the CBN News Break. The White House has made a holiday appeal to Iran for the release of three Americans, including Pastor Saeed Abedini. White House spokesman Josh Ernest says President Obama brought up the prisoners during a phone conversation with Iranian President Hassan Rouhani earlier this fall. The White House asked the Iranian regime to consider releasing the Americans on humanitarian grounds. The Christian owners of a bed and breakfast in England who refused to rent a room to a gay couple have lost their appeal at the UK's highest court. Peter and Hazel Mary Bull were sued and ordered to pay damages for turning away a male couple at their establishment. The Bulls appealed to the Supreme Court asking for a reasonable accommodation of their religious beliefs. They say their policy is based on their Christian belief that marriage is a union of a man and a woman. The court dismissed the case, saying the policy amounted to sexual orientation discrimination. Well, you can always get the latest from CBN News by going to our website at CBNNews.com. Pat and Wendy will be back with more of the 700 Club right after this. Turning 65 is a milestone. But no doubt you have been buried by Medicare supplement offers. All 150 Medicare supplement companies will overflow your mailbox prior to turning 65. Most likely confusing you and leaving you wondering where to turn. Good news. There is a toll-free hotline that can help cut through the confusion. 1-800-MEDIGAP. The trusted toll-free hotline. 1-800-MEDIGAP can help make sense of all the options offered. Taking the guesswork and frustration out of the equation. 1-800-MEDIGAP. 1-800-633-4427. Thursday, celebrate Thanksgiving with the 700 Club. We'll ring in the holiday with the Gettys, the Annie Moses Band, King and Country, and more. On a special edition of the 700 Club. Well, for many, the period between Thanksgiving and Christmas is all about shopping. Think Black Friday. Mm. And, of course, setting up decorations. But for Christians, it's also known as Advent. And recently, my oldest son's wife, my daughter-in-law, Lisa, shared with Terry about why we celebrate this Advent season. Well, Christmas is almost upon us, and if your home is like mine, I'm always thinking of ways to make the season really meaningful. And my friend Lisa Robertson is joining me right now because we want to talk with you about Advent, an age-old tradition, but one that still has meaning to a family today. Share a little bit, Lisa, about what Advent is. Advent is the season in the church calendar that begins four weeks before Christmas. And it's a time of preparation, and it's a time of talking about the coming of Christ, as an infant in the manger and also when he comes again in the second coming in glory. Mm -hmm. So it's all about coming towards. This is a very significant 
event in your home. I've known you for many years, and I know that your family celebrates this each day of the four weeks before Christmas. And there's a sense of anticipation that right. comes with this in a family. One of the things I love about Advent is I feel like it's God's gift to us because it is a time where we can pause, we can reflect, mm -hmm. we can really begin to think about what Christmas really is. It's, yeah. a, it's a lot more than the chaos that we've come to expect. And we put the wreath on our kitchen table where we go through the devotional. We light one candle the first week, two candles the second week, and we really learn about you what Advent is. You follow through the mm -hmm. whole process. But before we go to the candles, let's talk a little bit about what this means, because this isn't just a pretty wreath that you set on your table. Right. There's symbol to all of right. this. There is. It's all very significant. The wreath is round because it symbolizes eternal life, and we reflect on that's the life that we have in Christ. It's green because that also is an image of eternal life, and then we have holly berries in it because the red berries indicate and remind us the drops of blood that Christ shed for us. The other thing is the wreath is also in the shape almost of a crown, ah, like the yes. crown of thorns. Mm -hmm. Now, this is beautiful and magnificent. Some of this is alive, and you got it out of your yard, which people can be very creative doing, and some of it you've added on to with. Yes, you can add anything. Some years I have hydrangeas, some years I don't. It depends on what's growing in my garden and how it looks. Well, it looks beautiful today, I'll say that, but I want you to know the significance of this isn't the size or the beauty of the wreath, no. it's the message behind it. And that really begins to come our way through the lighting of the candles each week. Mm -hmm. Talk about the color of the candles and what that means. Well, the color purple is the main uh, Advent color. And the first thing that's important about it is it represents the royalty of Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, purple is a royal color. Another reason it's important is that purple is also the color of repentance. And so in the Advent season, one of the things that's important is not only just to celebrate Christmas and to prepare our hearts, but to really think about the things in our to lives, reflect. That, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to reflect and to really ask the Lord to just help us become more who he wants us to be. The third reason purple's uh, important is because one of the symbols of Advent is light. And right before the sun comes up, you'll have a purple sky. And it's a proclamation yes. of the sun that is just about yeah. to rise. And I think that's very significant. The purple would be just proclaiming Christ coming. The no, pink, you've got a pink is one. the, uh, they, some people call it the Mary candle. It can be called joy. There's a passage in the Bible that talks about Jesus being the Rose of Sharon. Mm -hmm. And so pink has several different meanings. And then the white candle is the last when you light and that represents the purity of Christ. So you you say this is the last one that mm -hmm. you light. So each of these you begin where? <laughs> okay. <laughs> you begin the with four weeks out. The, the four first weeks one. before Christmas you begin with a purple candle. And what we would do at our house is I would put a wreath on the table and we would sit down at dinner time and we would light one purple candle for the entire week. The first week we talk about the prophecies. There are four, over 400 prophecies in the Old Testament proclaiming the coming of Christ. And so we would just prepare our hearts for the coming of Christ, learn about the prophecies of Christ. The second week, we would light two purple candles and light two candles for the entire second week. And then we would read about the hope mm -hmm. that is in Christ. The third week, we would light the pink candle, the joy candle. Mm -hmm. And we talk about the joy of the Lord is our strength and the joy that Christ brings us. And then the fourth week, Again, we light the last fourth candle and we talk about worship and learn about one of the things I think is important about worship is we think of worship as something you do in church. Mm -hmm. You know, you worship and then you hear the message. And I think that worship is a way we should live. Yes. And we learn about just worshiping the Lord in just very simple and intimate ways. So then on Christmas morning, you would light all, all of, of these them. and... The Christ candle, but the we really light the Christ candle oftentimes on Christmas, Christmas Eve, Eve, unless we're too busy, and then we light it on Christmas morning. Mm -hmm. And by then you have a, a wreath that is filled with light. Yes. And I think that that's representative of just yeah. the light of Christ that comes into the world. Now this actually becomes a pause in your day, yes. a moment of family spent together, yes. focused on what the season is all about. You've put together a great little Advent book that has actually daily devotions that people can follow each right. day. So you don't even have to think up this stuff by yourself. <laughs> Lisa's done the work for you. 60 and, seconds yeah. or less. <laughs> <laughs> and it's also got uh, some advice here on how you can put a simpler wreath together if you'd like. And this wreath can be of your Anything. own creation mm -hmm. or whatever you want it to be. But what's really important is the family time spent together focusing on Christmas, the Christmas message, and anticipating, celebrating the coming of Christ. Lisa, thank you. I thank love the you. message this brings, the thank message you. of hope and celebration for the Merry holidays. Christmas. <laughs> Thank you, and to you too, and to you. We'll be back with more after this. This season, 
Experience the true meaning of Christmas with Christmas Radio on CBN.com. Christmas, a time for being home with the ones you love. A special time to help others. A time to celebrate the best gift of all, Jesus Christ. Cherish this holiday season with the ones you love. Experience Christmas Radio on CBN.com. If I can talk to anyone as much as I want to here, Namaste. Ooh, masaledad. Then why am I limited when I make international calls? Qué pena. Exactamente, amiga. That's why we'll connect the world with one low rate for unlimited calls. So I can call China as much as I want? True that. And India? Ah! And I can call my girlfriend in Brazil. Claro! Over 60 countries. People thought we were crazy to give you unlimited long distance. Crazy. crazy generous! Feel free to talk at Vonage.com. I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was sick and you looked after me. This year, consider kicking off the holiday season by giving a gift that will change lives all year long. Now through Give Back Tuesday, your gift will be matched by CBN Partners. Together we can all give back as a thank you for our many blessings. Welcome back. Well, you don't have to camp out in front of Best Buy or Walmart to get the best deal this holiday season. That's because CBN partners are going to match any gift that you give to our ministry dollar for dollar. So your donation will be able to help people get even more food, water and medical supplies all around the world. It's part of a national campaign called Give Back Tuesday, which runs from now until the Tuesday after Thanksgiving. All you have to do is give us a call, 1-800-759-0700, or you can log on to CBN.com. And again, you can be a double blessing to a family in need this Christmas. So that is a cool way to really celebrate is. the holidays. It's something everybody would take advantage of. I mean, my goodness, you double your money. Somebody's going to give whatever you give, they'll, they'll give that much they again. they got to do it soon. Now's okay. the time. Questions. Questions. Tyler, time to bring it on. Tyler writes, I have been having pain in my left side for months. I went to the doctors, they ran the gamut of tests, MRIs, CAT scans, you name it, and it all came back normal, but I'm still in pain. Someone said that the pain may be caused by a ghost who has attached itself to my body. How can I remove it? I need your help. Well, I don't believe in ghosts, and I doubt very seriously if that's what the problem is, but uh, there is such a thing as a spirit of infirmity. There's no question they're demonic spirits that, that cause pain. I don't know what yours is caused by, so I couldn't possibly say that, but I have rebuked in the past spirit of infirmity, and they have left people, and they have, the pain is left. Yeah, so if you keep that in mind, but not ghosts, no. <laughs> right. right. Susan writes, a person told me to repent for believing that Jesus is God. She keeps feeding me contradictory information. Does it say in the Bible that Jesus is, in fact, God? And she says, love your program, by the way. Uh, well, you remember Doubting Thomas, and uh, he was an Orthodox Jew, and he's there with Jesus, and uh, he wanted to stick his hand in the side and feel the nail prints in his hands. And Jesus said, okay, do it, touch me. And when he was finished, Thomas said, my Lord and my God. Mm. So he acknowledged him as God. Jesus himself said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. That's right. And so he took upon himself the adoration that was due to, to God because he was. And he said, if I deny what I am, then I'll be as big a liar as you all are. So the answer was, you read the Bible very carefully, and there's no question about the fact. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. Read the Gospel of John. Jesus is the Word. He was God. It's the, it's the Bible's full of it. Whoever's giving you this other information doesn't know what they're talking about and doesn't understand the Bible. All right. Absolutely. Well, Kimberly writes, a few years ago, a neighbor of mine came to our house. He said his father had kicked him out. I told him he could stay with us. He was very thankful and polite while he stayed with us. And I learned that he was a Muslim. And I heard him praying to Allah in my home. I was okay with it. But one day I felt an evil presence while cooking in my kitchen. I told my visitor that he needed to leave, go home and resolve his own issues. But I feel horrible, like I violated Matthew 25, 45 through 46. Did I do the right thing? I don't feel like I should only extend charity to other Christians. 
Uh, no, you shouldn't extend charity only to Christians. You should send charity to those that need it. But it doesn't mean you have to bring an, an unclean spirit into your home. And uh, I don't know, I wasn't there, don't understand the circumstances, but mm -hmm. if somebody in truth is worshiping some sort of a demonic presence, then that will pervade your home. And no, you don't want to go for hospitality to something like that. But I, I don't understand what's happening. And you said you felt a presence. Some of these things are very subjective, and it's hard to say, yes, this was or this isn't. But um, we don't have to offer uh, hospitality to uh, a coven of witches, for example. You don't have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Okay. I agree, Pat. All right. Um, Sharon writes, um, at a local hospital, they have a machine where they scan your hand to verify whether or not you are the right patient. I'm terrified. I think it has the mark of the beast written all over it. Should I be concerned? Not of that. Let's face it. It's a diagnostic tool hospitals use. This isn't the mark of the beast. Uh, the Bible says you won't be able to uh, buy or sell without that identifying mark. But I don't think some hospital scan uh, is, is it. You get scanned, your body scanned, but all kinds of things. If you want to be scared of something, I'd be scared of excess x-rays, which could lead to cancer, but that's a different issue. All right. The mark of the beast is still hopefully a ways off. A ways well, off. I don't know how far off it is, but that ain't it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Al writes, when you pray during the show, you see people and heal their ailments, but the Bible says that soothsayers and fortune tellers are evil and to stay far away from that. How are your words of knowledge different? If your words are from God, doesn't that contradict God? Um, I don't see anybody. Uh, the, the Bible, read 1 Corinthians chapter 14, and it lists the manifestations of the Spirit, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge. It is a word by the Holy Spirit about something that isn't perceived by the senses. That's all it is. I am totally against fortune telling and soothsaying because that is done of demonic forces. We are praying in the power of God, asking God's blessing on people, and if God happens to reveal in our minds a word, but I, I don't see anybody, we're not soothsayers, fortune tellers, or any of that baloney. I, I don't believe in that. Amen. Yeah, okay. it's the same way God speaks to us about anything. You know, well, he sure. might say, you know, go, go right, turn right today instead of turning left, you know? The, the Bible says you'll hear a, a, a word in your ear when you turn to the right or the left saying, this is the way you walk in. It, God speaks to his people today, and we have to acknowledge it. That isn't something hocus pocus. The other stuff is counterfeit. All right. Is that all the time? That's it. But I would like to add one thing to my other favorite verse about hearing from God is Jesus said, my sheep hear my, my voice. So if we belong to him, then we're going to hear from him. We should. Yeah. If we don't, we're, we're not his. Well, thank you for watching our program today. Well, we leave you with today's last blessing coming from the book of Isaiah, chapter 44, verse 3. Quote, For I will pour water on him who is thirsty and floods on the dry ground. I will pour my spirit on your descendants and my blessing on your offspring. And I'm telling you, as a grand, great-grandfather, but a grandfather of 14, uh, I've seen that blessing on my descendants. And so for Wendy and all of us, this is Pat Robertson. Happy Thanksgiving! <laughs>